One of the things preventing you from getting to your fitness goals may be the scale. That's right. What we found as trainers for over two decades was that often telling our clients to stop weighing themselves got them to move forward in the right direction. And on the contrary, people that weighed themselves often, often didn't get great results. So what we're going to tell you today in this episode is to throw your scale away. <laughs> get so, rid of it. So great. We were talking about this episode and, and doing this, and I was like simultaneously going through my DMs and literally just received a DM from somebody who has had finally taken that advice from us and throw, yeah. thrown away the scale. Yeah, it was, it was great. What did they say? I'll read it to you guys. It was like, uh, that way I don't screw it up, which yeah, I yeah. tend to do when I try and re regurgitate what someone says. It says, you gents are so right about the scale. I put it away, and after two months, I caved. I gained weight. But after a minute of what the fuck, oh shit, oh hell no, I remember my clothes are better fitting, was able to get into jeans I was not able to before, plus my waist was hanging over. What? I am stronger. Set up a gym in my garage with squat rack, bar, trap, etc., and get out there when I can. I work full-time as a primary caregiver for my mom who suffers from dementia and neuropathy in her legs. It is a struggle for time, but I do get in three times a week and have dumbbells at work for those days I cannot work out at home. I have, <clears throat> I have 40 more pounds to go, and I'm not stressing. I'm the oldest in my office, older than the doctors, coworkers, but knowing I am healthier, stronger, more active than all of them combined, well, that makes up for being the elder of the practice. That's huge, awesome. Huge thanks to yeah. you guys. Fitting in clothes better, stronger, feeling better. Yeah, yeah. the scale is, uh, boy, I, you know, I remember when I figured this out, um, with my clients, I, I started noticing this trend with clients where they would, because when I, when you first become a trainer, you're taught yeah. to weigh people, test their body fat, do their circumference measurements. It was like a weekly thing that you're supposed to do, right? They check in with you and you do these these measurements. And I noticed my clients' moods would shift. Oh my god! Yeah. Radically, if the scale went in the wrong direction, even though everything else was moving in the right direction, and then it became like this. It just completely crap them out. And not only crap them out, but then it would cause them to overcorrect or yeah. do things inappropriately right. because they were freaking out uh, over the scale. So, uh, you know, at some point, I don't remember how long it took me, but I remember telling my clients, we're not going to weigh you anymore. In fact, I the clients that I did track for myself as a trainer, I'd have them stand backwards on the scale mm -hmm. and they wouldn't look at the number. I do the same thing. Yeah. You know, that this, this is actually one of those things that, is so powerful that there's like things that we talk about on the podcast that obviously we've learned as coaches and trainers over time. And then there's things that I learned as a coach and I, and I figured out relatively early with my, my clients to your point, like it wasn't that long into training that I realized, Oh wow. Like, boy, if I, if I weigh my clients, every time I see them, they just end up, it's like rarely ever they not discouraged, right? Like mm -hmm. even when they lose weight, it's not enough. Or if it's, if they do lose weight, it's like, or if they don't, or they don't lose weight, then they're completely discouraged. And yet I was still on that same hamster wheel, not realizing like the power of, of it. Like, mm -hmm. so yeah, okay. You see it with your clients every day and you go, oh, I need to change this behavior because they're so attached to the scale that it's dictating their, how their mood and how yeah. they work out and stuff like that. So quickly pivoted from that. Like you, if, if I would, I'd have them weigh just so I have the stats, I'd turn them around backwards and I would tell them specifically why I don't want them to weigh themselves. I don't want it to get in their head. I know what I'm doing. <coughs> yep. But yet here I was weighing myself in the morning, weighing myself at night, every hmm. single day, oh, yeah. still of my yeah. life. Yeah. And so yep. funny how, like how obvious it was to me as a coach or a trainer to see that in my clients and know how powerful it was, yet I still was susceptible to that and fell for that trap of still weighing myself and it driving my behaviors around nutrition and training. And so it took a really long time for that to come full circle for for me to realize, oh shit, yeah, even I'm guilty of of the power of this thing. Well, I think initially too, I was a bit of a naive uh, trainer in that, like I didn't really know like how often like your body just like. Uh, fluctuates and, and the weight can, uh, depending on what you ate the night before, depending on like uh, your water retention, depending on sleep, sleep, yeah. stress. Like, I mean, there's just, it, it's just all over the place in terms of it being like something where it's actually more of a distraction than anything else. And like, like overall, like more macro trends is what you really need to kind of peer into occasionally. But um, I mean, at, at that point, at that point in the beginning of my career, I was like, 
that's the focus is trying to get your clients like that immediate uh, result. And, and weight was a big part of that. So we got to lose the weight and we got to show them that you're valuable in what we're doing. Today's program giveaway is MAPS Aesthetic. To enter to win, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, this month's program sales, MAPS Anywhere and MAPS Hit, both 50% off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. Now, this episode is brought to you by a sponsor, NASM. They're the world's premier certification for personal trainers. They have been for a very, very long time. And now that we work with them, you go through this link, you'll get yourself a discount on, on their certification. So go to nasmpt.com. All right, back to the show. It's interesting when you think about it, because still to this day, we get, you know, people that say things like, I want to lose 30 pounds. Like that's still a very, yeah. that's still very prevalent in our space. Like yep. that's a, 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 if you were to look and go, what is the most common goal? It's to lose weight. It's to lose weight. Right. We have episodes titled like that. Yeah. Specifically because that's because a it's Because it's searched yeah. so much. So that's crazy when you think about it. When you think about our journey with the scale, so much to the point that I would say it's, it's damn near irrelevant. Yeah. it's like that irrelevant like i i don't hardly ever weigh myself like literally weighing myself now is just like man it's been like forever since i got yeah. on the scale i wonder where i'm at yeah. you know it's more like that than it is like oh what, <clears throat> did i do this right or is that like so think about that for a second like something that a, a tool that we all used a lot early on in our career has has now reached a point in our career that I it's would the least important. I would say it's irrelevant. It is yeah, it it's so irrelevant. Use it. It's I funny. Remind I, you can. I don't care who you are, where you're at. Really, I mean, I guess. Granted, if you're uh, morbidly obese, yeah, hundreds of yeah, pounds. But of I don't use it. I only use it as part of a combination of metrics. Sure, never uh, on its own. Not on its own. Yeah, yeah, you just reminded me of this bit. This comedian uh, did this bit where he says he weighs himself every morning with his cat, and then he starves his cat. So you can see the scale <laughs> <laughs> moving down. I've never heard that. Yeah, there's one way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you told me, you, it's interesting you said what you said about yourself, Adam. I was the same way. I, I would weigh myself and look in the mirror and study my body uh, all the time until I had uh, developed some health issues, which people who listen to the show regularly know, I've talked about this before, but I had to throw the scale away and I had to stop really studying myself in the mirror in order to improve my health. At the end of a year, when I finally allowed myself to do those things, I realized I had been, I, I was more fit and I looked better than it ever looked before by, by stopping a, my hyper focus on that metric. Yeah. You know, weight is, it's a single metric, but, and it just tells you mass. It doesn't tell you what you're weighing. You know, the joke that I would tell people when they would uh, become members of my gym and they'd say, I want to lose weight. I'd say, well, we could cut your leg off. Is that the kind of weight you'd like to lose? And they'd laugh, but it's, look, it's, it's a serious question. Not that you'd want to cut your leg off, but what kind of weight would you want to lose? Right. And weight looks very different depending on where it comes from. If you were to look at a, a six you know, foot man who's 200 pounds at 20% body fat versus a six foot man who's 200 pounds at 10% body fat, it's the same body, same, the weight is exactly the same. They would look radically different. Radically different. Vastly different because the body fat percentages are different. Same thing with with women. You took you take a woman who's 150 pounds at a high body fat versus 150 pounds at a low body fat, same height, and the leaner person would look radically different, have a much smaller physique, better curves, better shape, yet if they were stand on the scale, it would say the exact same thing. So that's why it's irrelevant, is yeah, it just it's tells misleading. you mass. Yeah. And, and it, like a, a big, that's why I, it was a bit of an overgeneralization when I said it's it's completely irrelevant or like it doesn't, I, your weight doesn't matter at all because of course there's exceptions to the rule, right? So <clears> I'm, I'm, I, I am sensationalizing that a bit. Like, like if someone is 150 pounds overweight, like getting that person down 50 pounds plus off the yeah. scale is, is not going to be a bad thing. But I tell you what, I, I would say 80%, maybe more of my clients who needed to lose 10, 20, 30, even upwards of 40 pounds, they would say, which is, I would say most yeah. people fit in that category. Uh, we, we technically could have kept the scale exactly the same and just changed their body composition and they would be unbelievably happy with the physique they built. That's, and and I, I think that message can't be 
said enough because people don't think that way or yeah. else they wouldn't say things like i need to lose 30 pounds I, I, it would be a, cool to see a movement of like stay the same weight but lose the body fat. i tried to start that when yeah. i so when i when i first got on instagram the, the the few people that probably still listen to this podcast that were following me 10 plus years ago um that was my initial goal i weighed in i, I want to say at 214 pounds and 20 percent body fat so kind of similar to what you were mm. saying i was 214 though 214 or 212. And the goal was, I actually announced this on my Instagram to my, you know, back then 100 followers or whatever it was and said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to try my best to keep my weight exactly the same, but show you how I can completely change my physique. And at the end of it, I, I was literally the exact same weight. I think you saw me go down to like 212 up to 216. So I had this like four pound you know, up or down that I stayed, but I stayed right around the same. And it was my, it was my, and I, that was the goal was to kind of hover around. And honestly, I actually think that's a really good thing for people to try to, if you have, if you're not currently weight training, you're not currently following a, a meal plan, then a better goal than losing weight, even if you know you need to lose 30 pounds is actually stay the same weight but build some muscle and lose body fat simultaneously because that will probably give you a better, because in order to do that, right, to create more movement, to exercise, also change your eating habits and not go down on the scale or not go up means you're probably hitting right around what the body needs yeah, in order in to, su spot. to support the movement and exercise you're doing. And if you're stimulating it and you're sending a, 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 a signal to build muscle, it should adapt and build muscle. And if we do this just right, you should see a nice exchange of building muscle and to losing body fat, which should equal out to about the same I, on the scale. I used to use this as a, as a sales uh, method in the gyms that I would run. I've, I've told this, this, uh, this example many times, but I had a female trainer who I would, when I would have a potential member, I would, I would challenge them. And I'd say, if you could guess my trainer's weight within 10 pounds, I'll give you a month free membership. If you can't guess it, then you got to sign up today. And they'd laugh and we'd say, okay. And I'd call this female trainer in and they would all guess. Every person would guess. And I knew it, it was like well, clockwork, 90 to hundred pounds. She was petite, right? Oh, she weighs hundred pounds. Oh, 90 pounds. I think the heaviest somebody ever guessed was 110. She was 135 pounds, I believe, but very lean. You know, the, 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 the thing about body composition is it it's what determines your health and it's also what determines what you look like. It's not total weight. Total weight doesn't tell you much. It's what that is made up of. Like uh, when muscle takes up roughly maybe three-fourths, maybe a little more, three-fourths of the space of body fat. So if everybody lost 15 pounds of fat and gained 15 pounds of muscle, which is a lot, Everybody would look smaller, It'd but be it's a dramatic difference. <clears throat> dramatic, you'd be smaller. You'd be almost a fourth smaller, but you wouldn't just be a fourth smaller everywhere. You'd be a fourth. You'd be more than a fourth smaller in the places it matters. Like your waist would probably go down, you yeah. know, by by fifty percent right. because you don't have all this muscle around your waist. Then your shoulders would come out a little bit. Your glutes would come out Everything a little bit. Get more defined. You would look extremely different. A scale doesn't tell you that at all. Um, in fact, the scale, uh, if it if you just look at your weight on the scale and it goes down, that could be bad news if you're trying to lose weight and you're losing muscle. Like if you lost 10 pounds of muscle and you got on the scale and you're like, wow, I'm losing 10 pounds. I'm moving in the right direction. You are not moving in the right direction. Yeah. Your health has got worse. You look worse when you take your clothes off because now you're flabbier. Your body fat percentage actually went up because now your total body fat is a higher percentage of your body weight because you lost some weight from muscle, you've also slowed down your metabolism, which means now gaining body fat becomes easier. You've lost strength and mobility, and you've lost insulin sensitivity and androgen receptor density and it's for hard your hormones. To sustain, so it's more likely you're going to yo-yo. You're back. more likely to become sick. So the scale doesn't doesn't tell you that. All the scale says is weight, but it's body composition that matters. And it's funny because <clears throat> you'll say this to people. And here's why we say throw the scale away because people are like, well, fine, I'll get a body fat test too or whatever, which is cool. Body fat test plus scale, then you know you figure out what's going on. I don't care. I used to do both with clients. And even if the scale didn't move, but they got leaner and I'd be like, look, you gained four pounds of muscle, you lost four pounds of body fat. It would still mess with their heads. Yeah, yeah but, I, but I have this weight that I have in mind. I still want my, you know, the scale to go down. Body composition is what matters. The second part or, 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 or reason why you should throw, throw your scale away is that it takes your focus off of other metrics. I remember clearly examples of when I would have a client who I'd be training, and this was later on when I'd say, okay, we'll weigh you you know, less frequently or whatever. And they'd be getting stronger 
They're looking different. They're making right. comments like, oh my God, my clothes feel different. Well, it's like the DM I just read. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. That that person was literally saying, I listened to you guys. I threw the scale away. I didn't look at it for two months. All the things, waist is tighter, right. stronger in the gym, feeling better, stomach comes in, all these things that, but then saw the scale, they gained weight. And then it's like, Dude, it's I so have, funny yeah. how that can like totally, all of a sudden now you just said all that positive yeah. shit about yourself. And then you could all of a sudden see the scale and think you're you're failing. Yeah, a lot of times they're stronger. A lot of times they relieve a lot of chronic pain, and and so they're waking up with like no pain, uh, you know, in better mood. Like there's just so many other things involved to focus on that are positively happening. But if you're just stuck on this <clears throat> number on the scale, man, does that just take you? Away? I, I remember one woman in particular. I convinced her because we had trained for a little while and the scale was really messing with her. I said, okay, throw your scale away. Don't weigh yourself anymore. In fact, I had her bring it into my studio and I kept it. And I said, I'll weigh you in 60 days. In 60 days, we'll see where you're at. But for now, I want you to trust me. We're going to pay attention to all these other things. And so over the 60 day period, she got stronger. She had more energy. She felt better. She could move better. She's like, oh my God, my coworkers are commenting that I keep losing weight. My husband says I look so much leaner. And my mis the mistake I made was, is I asked her to guess, well, based off of everything you're hearing, how you feel, how much weight do you think she lost? She's like, oh, I feel like I lost at least 12 pounds. We stepped on the scale, three pounds. It went down three pounds. Yeah. Now she was distraught. Like crushed. Oh my God, I only lost three pounds. I'm like, oh, all the other so stuff you felt, <laughs> yeah. everything, all the comments, everything that people noticed, the fact that you thought you lost, that's all still true. <laughs> but the fact that it only went down three pounds now is making you feel, and she, and it was this really tough position for her to be in, a really tough mental battle that yeah. she had to deal with. Now, what had happened was she had gained muscle and lost body fat, and she had lost a little bit more body fat than the muscles she gained. She'd lost a lot of size. She felt better. Metabolism was fat, faster, but because the scale only went down three pounds and she expected a 12-pound <laughs> weight loss, yeah. she was disappointed, upset, and angry and was questioning the whole thing. Well, and that. a lot of times in that situation, because you're talking about she's added muscle so that she probably did lose 12 pounds or more of fat- but she added six pounds or more of muscle, and so on the scale, it's only. I don't remember a what the number was, yeah. but it was significant, right? Uh, I'm sure. She, I'm sure she did. If she lost, she was. I remember specifically because she had really good muscle building genetics. She, we didn't know this. She'd never been an athlete before, but she really developed yeah. good metabolism, good shape, good structure. And over a 60 day period, her strength went through the roof. Metabolism was was humming. But I remember how distraught she was because the scale only showed three pounds uh, of a loss. And she was like, oh my God, are we doing the right thing? Maybe I'm eating too much or whatever. And I'm like, oh my God, we should have never- this dissension immediately. Yes. Yeah. Now here's the interesting thing. When you, and this is it, because weight is what's talked about all the time, we place that as the top of the metrics. It's actually not nearly, it's not even close to the top of no, the metrics. No, a lot of this is, I feel like on our our shoulders, really as as trainers in the space, because- Well, the, our industry promotes it. Uh, we, ha we have to learn to, you know, and- I, I wasn't there yet in my career. Like, I think it was definitely after Justin had already left me by that time before I started to communicate this to my trainers where towards the end of my career, uh, coaching trainers, um, did I start to teach them this? Like it, when you see, we used to have this list of stuff like skin, hair, nails, energy, libido, mood, yeah. uh, you know, all like all the strength, probably. like, right. Di yeah. Sleep. yeah. This big old list. And, and I would teach my trainers that every time your client comes to visit you, ask these questions, Ask them, how's your, how's your sleep been doing? Oh, yeah. how's your libido? Doing? How like, and, and you have to retrain them, even though I know they hired you, you know, to help me lose 40 pounds, you got to retrain them to be paying attention. Otherwise, if as coaches and trainers, if we're not doing that and we're not educating them around the value of all these things, we're really doing them a disservice. Even if you get them to lose the 40 pounds, yeah. even if you get them to the goal that they've hired you to go do and you neglect to, to attach all these other incredible values of why they're exercising, you really are doing them a disservice and you're really failing them. You're temporarily giving them this, you know, this They'll arbitrary a number. long-term relationship. Yeah, yeah. They, they won't. It's sure you, okay, so what? You, uh, a client who has good discipline hired you, great job. And you can and you can tell them what to do. You, you told them two plus two is four and they agreed and they followed through on it. But it doesn't mean that you significantly changed this person's life yet. Until you can teach them to have a better relationship with exercise and nutrition and all these other things that are so important, they're never going to move well, past the scale thing. Here's why. I've used this example before, but, I, I saw, but I'll use it again. There's this wonderful, this is a wonderful analogy because uh, I think it exemplifies what we're talking about. But there's this, 
this psychology experiment. It's a very popular one. You've probably seen it before where there's a bunch of people passing a basketball back and forth. I think it's like 10 people. And yeah. you have to count how many times they pass the basketball. So the guy in the, in the, in the beginning of the video says, okay, count how many times people pass the basketball. Let's see if you get it right. And then you're watching and you're counting, counting, counting. And at the end he says, did you see the gorilla walk through the crowd? And you're like, what? Then they rewind the video and literally a man in a gorilla suit walks through the yeah. crowd, but you don't perceive him <laughs> because you're focused simply on counting the times the basketball is being passed. So when your focus is on the scale, you end up ignoring or not perceiving all these other potential benefits or detriments. Like you could be losing weight on the scale and you're happy, but you could be feeling terrible. Energy is going down, not realizing you're doing it the wrong way. Hair's falling out. I have had clients like this, like I'm losing weight. And I'm like, your hair's falling out. Your, yeah. your nails are brittle. Like you don't feel good. Like this is not moving in the right direction. So it takes your focus off other metrics, which I'll say this, here's the interesting thing. Take weight off the, 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 the plate for a second. If we focus on other metrics, strength, energy, sleep, libido, mobility, and we move those all forward, the scale doesn't matter anymore. You are moving in the right direction and you are getting leaner and you're going to look better. And if your goal is to lose a lot of weight, 50 pounds, let's say, the scale will move down. Yeah. That scale will move in the right direction when all the other metrics move in the right direction. The scale by itself doesn't guarantee the other metrics move in the right direction. You can go up or down on the scale and you could be getting a worse health, regardless of what your goal is. You could be trying to build muscle or gain weight, move it up, become worse with your health, or try to lose weight, go down on the scale, health becomes worse. And it's Slow really down. hard to be hitting all those other markers and not be significantly improving your health. That's right. right? If all those other markers right. are improving, even incrementally are improving, you are getting healthier. Right. You are getting fitter, regardless of what the scale has to right. say. Right. And the third part about this is it messes with your head. Mm -hmm. If if you're if you okay, this here's how you know that this is that you're somebody who should throw the scale away. If your weight on the scale will then dictate how you feel for the rest of the day, time to throw the scale away. Mm -hmm. That what did the scale just tell you? It told you nothing about you as a person. It told you nothing about how healthy you are. It told you nothing about muscle building and performance or anything like that. If you weigh yourself day to day and the scale goes up a couple pounds and you feel, oh man, I'm gonna get my fat clothes out. I'm not going to go to the dinner anymore. Uh, I don't like the way I look. I feel terrible. I'm self-conscious or whatever. Then you need to take that scale and throw it away. That is a dysfunctional relationship. This is an abusive boyfriend that you need to get rid of <laughs> because you, that should not dictate how you feel on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and that, and that's, that's how it messes with your head. And when it messes with your head like that, what ends up happening is... You overcorrect. Overcorrect. You overcorrect. And, and this has happened multiple times with, with clients that like... You, they'll get an unfavorable result. And even though they have like upward trend in terms of their progress and a lot of these other metrics are starting to really move uh, in a positive direction, just completely will abandon the game plan. Yes. It just, no, I guess what the recipe is, I have to like- Starve myself. Starve yeah. myself. And then I have to like sweat everything off and, and I have to go in that direction. Uh, and and this is the frustrating part and really something you have to outline and and uh, forecast for for clients so they know like this is a this is a longer process than uh, the immediate and also the scale is not going to be beneficial for me to use this this part of the conversation is is so important and so difficult um, and it really was highlighted for me in during my journey of of competing uh, because. Never in my life have I been so detailed about the, the calories I'm consuming, the water I'm intaking, the amount of time I'm working, the steps. I mean, I was just, every metric was accounted for. And of course, the scale too. And you can have, you can have all the knowledge in the world around nutrition, physiology, and that understanding of, of what you need to do in order to change this body composition like I did. And still, that if you allow that scale to be the driver of your decisions, it'll still fuck with you even at that level. Yeah. I mean, that was one of the most difficult things was I'm like checking my boxes. Okay. Had this much water. Okay. Eat this macros. Exactly. Okay. Got my workouts in. Okay. Like hitting, 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 hitting everything. And then, you know, something happens where my scale stayed the same or went up or went down to a like, couple pounds too quick. And the, the feeling that I would get of like, oh, sh what am I doing wrong? What <laughs> yeah. So and I think I told you this not that long ago, why this is where this was the birth of this rule for me, where I would start think things like, okay, one, 
I'm going to only let, I'm going to let the body fat percentage. And even then the body fat percentage, I would need to have two bad tests before I would adjust because how much these variables, these, these things, these ways that we measure what we yeah. think is a, is, is what's telling us if we're doing good or not. Like I, I needed to have like multiple bad trends, trends yeah. in order to correct. Because if I went <laughs> by every time I got on the scale, it moved in a direction I didn't want it to move. Oh my God. And, and imagine, so, so, and what that highlighted for me is all the years experience I have, how dialed I am. And then I know this about the scale and yet it's still messing with my head. All I went was like, oh my God, how many people are wrestling with this at yeah, home? That's how powerful it is. Yeah. I'll tell you what I training clients. I could easily screw somebody up by having them weigh themselves regularly and, and often they would do much better when I had them not weigh themselves at all. Now we would look at other metrics and I would make sure that they focused on other aspects. Like the, again, like their strength was one of my favorite ones. Like, are you getting stronger? How do you feel? How do your clothes fit? How's your energy? Let's pay attention to all these things and let's take the scale away. Whenever I did that, people would always trend in the right direction. In my early days, when I would have clients weigh regularly, which is what I do. Oh, make sure you weigh yourself. Let me know, whatever. It almost always moved people in the wrong direction because they would overcorrect. Uh oh, the scale went up a couple of pounds. Tomorrow I'm going to starve myself. Oh, now I'm starving. I'm going to binge. Oh, I need to overrun. I got to go run. I know South said don't train today, but I'm going to go push myself even harder because the scale's not moving in the right yeah. direction. And it, it was almost like kryptonite. The scale was almost like kryptonite. Almost always would screw people up because of how it tends to screw with our heads and body weight in general. And this is especially true for women. Like they say, never ask a woman how much she weighs, right? It's like, uh, it's like this number that people are afraid of, or what does it mean? This is why strength training for women, thankfully these days, strength training is gaining popularity among women. But for a long time, women were didn't like it because uh, what if the scale goes, even if I'm leaner, what if the scale goes up? It's like, mm -hmm. well, who cares if you're leaner? That doesn't mean anything. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. By the way, here's the last part. Your weight can fluctuate on a day-to-day -day basis pretty dramatically. And it doesn't mean anything. You know how much water you can gain or lose in a day, depending on nine pounds. Uh, yeah. That's was that oh, you? Yeah. Nine, nine pounds. pounds. Wow. I, so I didn't expect. I did this intentionally to prove this point that you're bringing up right now. I did it during when I was posting on Instagram and and growing the following and stuff like that. And I was tracking my journey. Uh, one of the most craziest things that, especially when I started to ramp the water up. Obviously, that's. You, Keep an account, right? So people that are going, no way. Yes, I documented it. I shared it. I showed it. Yeah, you're a big dude, a lot of muscle. Yeah, right? six foot three, got a lot of muscle. I'm a big dude. I was drinking. I got up to almost three gallons of water at one point when I was pushing the water really hard. Um, so there's a lot. And then you, you guys already know my peeing situation in the night three times and stuff like that. So of course, this there's going to be this massive... But I mean, I would have never guessed it to be that, that potential. But think about that for a second. Again, I'm an extreme example but how much you can fluctuate and and how much, by the way, too, visually that looks different. So my the way my body would look, completely carved up, water, water retaining, everything high to the morning time of nine pounds of water weight coming off of me. Mm -hmm. If you ever seen nine pounds of water weight come off of you, you look like you lost 10, 15 pounds yeah. of body fat. Oh, yeah. So I, and that was the point of the pictures I show people. These, I would show these two pictures of myself of 24 hours apart from each other. And I looked like a completely different. I mean, yeah. nine pounds, nine pounds of all inflated up and then all of a sudden deflated afterwards. And I'd show people like, this is, this is no pump, no nothing. I, this is just literally me 24 hours of letting all the water. I come could out very of quickly gain or lose five pounds within a couple of days by simply manipulating water, water retention, either through carbohydrate, sodium, um, sweating, water intake. That's it. But a lot of people don't realize that that happens naturally throughout <laughs> the day. Like maybe, you drank less. Maybe you ate out more, so you had more sodium. Maybe you lost sleep. Mm -hmm. Losing sleep tends to cause right. water retention. You're more inflamed. So does stress. So do, so do hormone fluctuations can change things. Like if a man's testosterone goes up, his so does his water retention. Of course, women have their monthly cycle, so they're pretty. Uh, they they understand uh, at least that's that aspect of it. But if you weigh yourself every, my point with this is, if you weigh yourself every single day, and you're seeing these fluctuations. It's messing with your head every single day. And yeah. what you're trying to do with these water fluctuations is correct with diet yeah. and activity. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Uh, so towards again, towards the end of my career, I would weigh clients once a month and I wouldn't even let them look at the scale. And this was in combination 
with body fat percentage tests and circumference measurements and all the other metrics we, we mentioned earlier. Only then did it really make sense because then I could see it's body fat, it's muscle. Oh, and you feel good or you feel bad or energy's going up. Oh, you're stronger or you're not stronger. That's when it made sense. Well, for context. Towards the back half of my career, the way I used it was more so just to make sure that I wasn't swinging any direction too much. Oh, yeah. I didn't want to see us go up too much. I didn't want to see us go down too much. And so, because another mistake that a lot of people make, especially when your goal is weight loss, is they love to see that first nine pounds yeah. come off the scale. And like for me as a coach and a trainer, that would be like, oh, wow, I cut way too much. What am I doing? Like that was versus celebrating that with, I think I think the young trainer did, right? I have a client hires me when you lose 50 pounds, I show them nine pounds off the first week because half of that's water and just carbohydrates. Oh, most of it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you're like, yeah, we're doing the right thing. I would be like, oh, whoa, we could I need to feed you more. So I use the scale to like really like okay if I'm if I'm feeding this person appropriately I'm training them appropriately then I should have a nice exchange of building muscle and burning body fat I kind of want to keep their weight the same and I will allow that to dictate increasing calories or not which is so difficult to explain to somebody who's hiring you to lose weight that you're like hey I'm wa I'm weighing us to make sure we don't lose anything right now like that's really hard to be able to get that across to the the value of that when you're when you're first getting started with a client of like man we are far better off keeping our weight the same building your metabolism up so that the weight loss part of this becomes a lot easier than we are racing to how low can we get that scale as fast as we can that's a losing battle it is sure. a losing battle it reminds me of these these commercials and ads i had a client that used to get these hydrocolonics and she would show me these ads and they would say things like lose six pounds in a session she's like oh it's crazy i lost like six pounds is that those, the enemas <laughs> yes yeah, yeah i'm funny. like that's not six that's not body shit. fat yeah. you know they just flushed a bunch of water <laughs> and stuff at you <laughs> anyway it's crazy stuff look if you want to learn about peptides peptides are new here in medicine um in fact you probably heard of glp1 agonists like semaglutide uh wegovy ozempic but there's other peptides, ones that raise growth hormone, ones that help with recovery. If you want to learn about them, we have a free peptide guide. It costs nothing, and it teaches you about all the most popular peptides. You can find it at mindpumpfree.com. You can also find us all on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpmedia, and Adam is at mindpumpadam. 